Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. A few years ago, I took it upon myself to investigate options for some caregiver reprieve for my dad. He was still active in his Rotary Club. He would go out to lunch with friends on a weekly basis, and I knew it would be healthier for both of them if they had some reprieve from each other. I found a lovely senior social program not far from their home and was very excited about the options that they had available for seniors with memory issues or even mobility issues. Just the opportunity for mom to be with people like her in an environment that would help stimulate the mind and the body. Unfortunately, dad was not interested in pursuing this option further. So when I found out about the multi-generational preschool and senior social program here in my hometown, I had to check them out and see if they would be willing to give us an interview. Mom and I went to their Heart for Senior luncheon on Valentine's Day and it was fantastic. She participated in all types of activities that I can't get her to do in her uh, memory community or even with me in my home and we had a terrific time. So I hope you find this interview with Jennifer from the Celebration Center helpful and informative. Hello, my name is Jennifer DeRusso, Senior Coordinator at the Celebration Center. I wanted to learn more about your preschool and senior social day programs. Okay, the Celebration Center is a compromise of a preschool and after school program And now the last component to our intergenerational facility is a senior day program. And this is an uh, adult day program, which is a social model that is for seniors that are living at home and need some either socialization or um, mild to moderate care, maybe experiencing some memory issues, dementia, Alzheimer's and just would benefit from being around uh, peers and interacting through a number of activities throughout the day with children that are located on the same site. And how did, um, what's the research on the intergenerational interactions? The research, and there is a ton of research that um, shows that it is mutually beneficial to get the generations together. It is both, physically beneficial for seniors um, to be around um, children, you know, getting more exercise and playing games. and um, But socially, it's even, you know, just the research is compelling to see how much not only that the seniors get for it, but the children get out of it as well. It's even shown that um, children do better academically that are around the seniors. So just tons of research out there that shows that really we have a gap in um, the generations coming together, but that it is such a a missing component in our society and it is so beneficial. I mean, you can, anybody that sees our, either our senior volunteers that work over in the uh, preschool currently or in our after school program, which is kindergarten through fifth grade, when you see those seniors come in, come into the room and you see those children light up. I mean, it is phenomenal. You, I cannot even explain what it's meant to not only the, the teachers that love having them there, but the children that really love having someone there that is um, an extra person in that room that they can talk to. I mean, they run up and scream, Miss Ginger. And um, that's just one of our our. our wonderful senior volunteers here in the afternoon and what she has said that it's done for her life as a retired teacher and these are all highly um, educated people that have you know worked in I mean most of our senior volunteers tend to be um, teachers but or retired teachers so that's interesting but um, not all of them but they just say how much that it has given them purpose And it's um, just brought a lot of joy and blessing to their lives to be a part of it. And then watching the children who interact in the adult day programs that we visited and um, the people that will be here is they light up a room. The kids light up a room and um, you can be in a group of seniors 
trying to lead an activity. And then when they see the children come in, it is just a change in atmosphere. And that's one of the most exciting things to see the generations come together. That's interesting because my mom was much more um, interested in the activities when we came and visited. We didn't interact with the kids, but she's not that interested in the activities in the memory community she lives in. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of see they're doing it a little bit more for the kids and it's something to do with kids, especially Mm -hmm. women like my mom, who's a, you know, mom and a grandmother, obviously, you know, it's, I think it's like, um, kind of like a going back to your, your roots. Yes. So that's actually very interesting. And it does. And it provides memories for the participants when they see the children and uh, memories of maybe when they were a child or, or were around children. But it also provides really a need for, like I said, purpose mm-hmm. before. You know, let me help, let me help you um, with this. Let me encourage you. And isn't that what we are all looking for is to have some purpose in life? Oh, definitely. And if you feel like you've come and you're at this certain age and there's nothing left... Of course you would feel melancholy or down. So, um, you know, providing the children and seeing them, even with song and music, I mean, music therapy alone um, can, of course, brighten someone's day. But when you see the children singing and, um, you know, going through their motions and the, the participants get involved. And so... That's exciting to see, too. And you know what? I, we recently went on a field trip to visit another site, and there was a lady in the um, audience who was viewing the children, and you can see this lady light up, and she practically got up and was doing the motions with them and told them what wonderful children. Come to find out, she also was a retired teacher, but um, she had Alzheimer's, but you know, it was there and it sparked memories for her. And she stood up and she said, you are amazing. You are wonderful. And she was telling the children this and you could just see what a difference it made for oh, her to awesome. see them. Do you guys ever do field trips to um, memory communities? Yes, we do. That's awesome. Yes, we do. And, <clears throat> um, you know, I recently did one, I think it was in Thanksgiving and When I walked into the room, it was right before the children came in, they were doing some study amongst the the residents there. And the room was, you could hear a pin drop. And I thought, you know, this is not the kind of life that, you know, you want to be leading. You don't want to, you know, there didn't seem like a lot of joy. Those children came in, and I'm telling you, the faces... And what those residents got out of it, like I was saying before, it just life came into the room and um, mutually beneficial. And they said, and even so that this one of the ladies started crying and the children asked, why is she, she crying? But it wasn't sad tears. It was happy tears. And she just got so much joy out of seeing them that it really literally brought her to tears. And um, for the kids to see that... Also, that that um, the elderly are not scary, because um, I think sometimes we're not used to being around um, in our society. You know, grandparents used to live near mm-hmm. the children, and now we're so far away from each other. Now the families aren't as close-knit in living proximity as they used to be. So they're not getting that from, you know, their older family generations. So sometimes there is an age... Um, a fear of the aging, a fear of the elderly, that it is a scary thing. They, it's different. And I, I mean, even looking back to when I was in uh, kindergarten, my mother was a director of nurses. My father was an administrator and just a f- long family line of um, my grandparents owning skilled nursing facilities. So I grew up mm-hmm. around um, elderly And we took one of my kindergarten classes to visit. And I remember friends being scared. Oh, you know. And I thought, what do you mean? These are my friends. (laughs) You know, come on, let's go. I, You know, I didn't think anything of it. But kids that are never around um, the, you know, elderly, they can have a fear and um, fear of that. 
And if you're not around it, it does provide um, provide a, a stigma sometimes. And um, so it's it's good to introduce that that we're all on that yeah. same journey. <laughs> and to point out, did you know, God really someday you're gonna be that age and for the kids to think that and do you know they used to be four they (laughs) used to be six like you and so just bridging that gap together is just you know really amazing for them to get the light bulb like oh really or even to the participants do you remember when you were six or can you imagine back to those days you were you know for us to realize remember we were like that once it's hard to remember back that far, and I have a grandmother that will be 100 at the end of March, and there's times when I tell people that, I just shake my head, and I think, I can't imagine like what 100 years of life is like, mm-hmm. and she's great. She's mostly blind, but other than that, she's like physically, mentally just fine. That's wonderful. Yeah, so... And does she think it went quick? I don't know. I'll have to ask her. Yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, it's like my, her husband, my grandfather has been gone for just a little over 20 years. So that's, that's a really long time. They were married over 50 and, you know, now he's been gone for 20. So it's just like, wow. You know, and you think back to, you know, we didn't have computers when I was a kid and, you know, um, her mother came across the country in a covered wagon. So it's mm-hmm. like, holy Toledo. <laughs> like, yeah. Just hard to imagine. So it is really good to interact the kids with older people. And I remember my great grandmother used to tell stories about her childhood. And I wish I'd been a little older to appreciate that. Um, she had a very, a life very similar to Little House on the Prairie, which was very popular at the time. So it was kind of like, her her version of Little House on the Prairie wasn't as glamorous as the TV, and I was like seven or eight. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was hard to. I listened and I remember it, but you know, looking back, it's like, man, I wish I'd got more of those stories. I wish yes. we'd recorded them, all that good stuff, because, you know, her hers was real life, not TV. Mm-hmm. Little House on the Prairie, and it was very interesting. I think that's one of the greatest gifts you can give to your. Uh, kids and your grandkids and and so on is stories and if you can write it down to write it down because they're going to want to know and sometimes we don't remember to ask when they're here and then it's too late so to leave that legacy is you know something that um, even to the people that you don't meet you know I wish my mom passed at a very young age and um, well, I think it was young, 52. That's young. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, just for her grandchildren, I wish, you know, that even things that I, I don't know about her that I wish that I, I did know or that I wish I could tell my children or that she could put into her words. But her mother, my grandmother, who I was very close to, lived to 97. Wow. And I remember asking her, what was your favorite era of life? You know, because I figured 97, you've been through many. Yeah. So what was your favorite decade? And she would tell me her 50s. That was her favorite decade. And she just felt like she'd been through, you know, kind of the hard parts. And she was still young and vibrant enough to enjoy. And she's raised her kids and she got to enjoy her grandkids. So I just always thought that was really interesting and gave me so much to look forward to that you know, oh, okay. It does. It's, it gets better as you get older. I agree. It doesn't have to get worse. <laughs> yeah. And I think sometimes we're so afraid to age and, um, you know, that's what this world will even tell us that it's not, it's not great to age, but then the people that have done it and lived it can mm-hmm. tell us that it can be really great as well. Oh, I, I, because my maternal grandmother lived to 91, even though she had Alzheimer's. And my paternal grandmother is almost 100. I feel like, you know, I'm 51 now. I'm like, I'm, I'm only at the, yeah. the, first, the beginning of the second half. And yeah. 50s is pretty good. It's my, you know, despite all of the chaos and stuff that happened last year with my dad on hospice and passing and mm-hmm. moving my mom to the memory community. Last year was rough. My daughter did finally move out. Mm-hmm. She's 26 now. So it's, you know, it is better. It's like mm-hmm. 50s isn't too bad as long as you're, you know, you're healthy and you're not you know, destitute. Yes. You know, hey, it's not too bad. Yeah. You know, so now I always tell people, well, I haven't had a perfect year yet, so I better keep 
moving yeah. forward. <laughs> you know, when I get that perfect year, I might know, uh oh, <laughs> it might be almost over. Yeah. So the senior volunteers, they help with, do they do tutoring or? They do a gamut of things. So they'll come in when they're over in the uh, preschool and the after school. They'll help the teachers with whatever they need, but um, they can come and they can do story time. They could bring their an activity to do. They can do an uh, arts and crafts activity, play games. But they also, some of them do provide, especially in the after school, a need for um, tutoring. And so we do have a gentleman that was a retired special ed teacher mm. as, as you know and a and regular teacher as well but um so he helps them out with their homework um as well as um our other volunteer she does the same so it's really whatever the kids need but I've seen um one of our volunteers just be able to sit and talk to the kids just having you know like I said that extra even that extra body there of someone who is actively engaging in a conversation with a child one-on-one attention that's something that you know sometimes the teachers don't get the opportunity to do they would love to do it yeah but you have you know 24 children or however many you know in the afternoon that you can't always engage one-on-one well these senior volunteers they get to do that you know they're never alone um but you know even out on the yard just engaging in a hey I see. I see. I like what you're doing, or um, and providing that with even some of the children that maybe have um, some struggles has made such a difference in their life. And I've had parents come and tell um, our, you know, our front office that this person has not only changed. This has changed your program having her. I am so thankful that this woman is here. Um, she's made a difference and in, in, impacted the parents' lives as well because the kids go home and talk about them. Oh, that's nice. You know? And, I mean, just having that is, yeah, that's just amazing. So for the seniors that come in for the social day program, what, are the, what kind of activities do they do? So um, they'll come in, and they, the day will start about 930, so that will be a rival and greeting and we uh, really are looking forward to having senior volunteers come in as well to our senior day program, which not only enhances the ratio, but just the atmosphere, having somebody else like similar to helping out over in the, um, the, the school age and preschool to help out here, having that extra set of hands and having that extra ear um, to listen is, is really what we look forward to doing as well. But what they'll, um, what a typical day will look like is at 9.30, they come in, they greet. We usually have, you know, um, snacks and beverages, um, you know, ready to go when they come. And then about um, 10 o'clock, we do what a, a check time. And um, we'll have different themes depending on um, the month, you know, what's going on and activities for the day. And so it's kind of like a current events okay. also as well. So just kind of a, a chat time, a current events time. And then at 1030 is when some of the children will come over on a per, uh, particular day. It depends what the activity will be. But whether they come over um, to do, you know, like I said, story time, we'll have different uh, vendors and um People come in from the community, maybe a music time, music program, and um, some of the children will come in for that, you know, do different presentations, of, of that kind of thing. And then um, that will go on, and then we'll do some kind of a, mo- uh, sorry, music and mov- movement, <laughs> music and movement, and um, just to get people going, and it's really tailored to the particular participants that come. You know, I had a gentleman come and say, you know, arts and crafts is not for me. Well, we're not going to sit and make you do arts and crafts if that's not your thing. Golf. Golf was his thing. So we get a putting green. You know, that's what we'll do. It's catered really to each participant, you know, whether they there's a garden. So we have gardening. Um, and it really depends on the particular people that are in the program at the time, what we do. There's cooking that we'll do, um, things like that. And then there's lunch. So um, they'll be bringing for now. We hope someday we have dreams of 
of what our program will look like. And maybe we'll have a chef someday, (laughs) but, um, for now what they'll do is they'll be bringing their lunch and then we'll have a lunchtime or they can uh, order in lunch. So there's different, um, places that they can order in from and, uh, we'll have a lunchtime and maybe some of the, the preschoolers will come in at that point too, just to have lunch with the seniors and then in the afternoon, um, we'll do another activity and the after school kids will come in about, I believe it's one o'clock and do, you know, maybe it's a bingo or balloon toss or something. Sometimes it's just taking walks and, um, we even hope to have a bike someday. I don't know if you've seen this, but it's a bike where the rider behind you and you're sitting kind of like what they do in large cities, San Francisco mm-hmm. and and you can have passengers in okay, the front. Yeah. So we hope to have that and actually go on bike rides on the path and put the participants in there and go get some fresh air and sunshine. And um, we, I've seen it, and we just fell in love with it. There was a guy in, in Europe that was just going around giving uh, rides to seniors. And they I think just I said, saw that. Yeah, they just said they love to be out and see the birds chirping and the wildlife and, the you know, just like I said, getting some fresh air and sunshine. So that's, we really, really, really want to look into getting that. And then, um, like I said, the after-school kids will come in, do an activity, and then it's, uh, we have a snack time. It sounds like we're eating a lot. So we have a snack time, and then it's time to go. Awesome. But one thing is different from our program that we're really excited about is that we are um, able to provide some transportation for um, ambulatory participants that can, you know, that are able to get into the van. We can um, provide pickup and um, drop off depending on what their needs are. So that's something that we're really excited because some of the um, transportation out here is very difficult for um, the seniors and there was a lady that called that really wanted to be a part of our program and she was traveling to Antioch from Brentwood and it took her two hours each day on the transportation that she was receiving and it was really hard on her and she didn't want to go of course two hours is a two hours there and two hours back so with all the stops and so it was just yeah it didn't make the program beneficial for her so um this program, unfortunately, um, Medi-Cal does not pay for. So it's a you know social day program, and that's not covered right now, as some of the uh, adult day health programs are. So um, you know someday we hope to be able to uh, you know provide um, you know through grants or donations uh, scholarships for um, seniors to come that may not be able to afford it. But right now it is, um, you know, private pay. So that's um, challenging for some that are on Medi-Cal that um, it would be beneficial for that their doctors even are recommending it. And in this lady's case, their doctor was strongly recommending that a program like this would be a lot better for her instead of the program that she was in. But unfortunately, Medi-Cal would only cover that. So, Yeah, I've read and done research on how um, isolation is terrible for seniors Mm -hmm. and worse for people with memory issues and um it's fantastic that you guys can pick up and drop off because you know that's that's a challenge like you said with this lady that's having to do two hours each way and it's not even that far it's Mm -hmm. like that's super frustrating yeah um to hear but that would be that would be very beneficial um i'm actually going to be talking with um the legislative what is she, a legislative advocate from Jerry McMur- McNerney's office mm-hmm. and um, the Alzheimer's Association. So I'll mention that to her, that, yes. you know, that we have these social programs that are so beneficial, but they're not covered even at all. Even if they covered part of it would be super beneficial for the seniors, of which yes. we have a lot out here. Yes, and research even shows that um, for a, a senior that is in the hospital, the um, likelihood of them being readmitted to the hospital if they are not involved in a program is 
much higher than if they are in even a social day program because they're being monitored on a regular basis by other people outside of the home. They're getting um, different things. You know, they're getting we're make someone is making sure that they're eating properly. Mm-hmm. Somebody is making sure that they are being stimulated. Someone is making sure that they're having whatever exercise that they are able to do, that they are doing that, which is beneficial as well. So as far as hospitals and healthcare really, really like the benefits of um, social day programs as well from a, a physical and um, health standpoint. So, you know, the longevity of someone being able to remain as healthy as possible is just much greater if they participate in a program like this, not to mention how beneficial it is for the caregiver, mm-hmm. which is um, the respite care and having someone just be able to take some downtime or get some activities done that they need to, um, errands that they need to run, just a break in general is really, really huge for a caregiver and important for a caregiver to be able to do that. Um, You know, it's just really taxing Mm -hmm. on someone who is living um, with someone that has challenging health needs and Um, even dementia or Alzheimer's. And so they need to take that in order for them to be able to take care of somebody else. you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. I've read a statistic that says 65% of caregivers will end up hospitalized or deceased before the person they're caring for is gone. And that's just, uh, that's a huge number. Yes. And so it's, I'm hoping that, you know, as the population is aging and we're becoming aware of all the challenges for you know caring pe- for people at home and all of the benefits of like this program and other you know interventions and stuff that we should be doing with them that you know are you know medical taxing whatever the government will help change the direction of where they're spending the money and spend it more on keeping people healthy preventative yes, yes. definitely um it's just crazy yeah <clears throat> And I think, too, and and as soon as you are aware that you have um, a situation where you are now have come become a caregiver for someone, it's educating yourself Mm -hmm. um, the best that you can with all of the information that you need and getting into a caregiver support group, talking, 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 talking to people, getting the resources in your community what's out there, what can help, because you do have to think ahead and you do have to, not only for yourself, but for your caregiver, if something does happen to you, the stress of it, you think you can handle it, you're not supposed to handle that. You know, you you need help and um, you need to think about what would happen if to your loved one, if something happened to you. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the statistics show that the, unfortunately the caregivers end up hospitalized or, um, you know, dying before the people that they're caring for. And then what happens to them? That's a lot of fantastic information, but let's take a quick break and thank our sponsors. Our sponsors make it possible for you to enjoy this podcast free of charge. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbkseniorliving.com. Or call 949-242-1400. And like you said, preventative care is really the key and what 
I agree that we need to look at more in our society in general mm-hmm. um, instead of, you know, what do we do now? So, yeah. Um, since we moved my mom to the memory community, like I said, she doesn't really participate in a lot of the activities. Sometimes she does, but she's got people that she can socialize with and she's physically fine. So she frequently helps, you know, the people in wheelchairs navigate around chairs in the dining room. And, you know, she talks about, you know, well, this person's my really good friend or friends help each other. So it's like, even though, you know, there's a stigma or you feel guilty, maybe putting your family member in a, in a, um, memory community or even moving into assisted living, um, there's a lot of benefits to it. You know, I, I felt very guilty that my sister and I couldn't take care of her at home. Um, but then, and I knew it was better for her, but actually seeing how just the interaction, the socializing that she wasn't getting when she was at home with my dad is just, you know, crucial. And so, yes. And I think that goes back to, it, it sounds like she's finding purpose in the place That's true. that she is at now in helping others and um, fulfilling that kind of, you know, really need that we have inside of us to find something that we enjoy to do and to feel like we are making a difference. Um, so, yeah, so that sounds, that's great. But I think, too, what I was going to say about, um, you know, this being the step before you put someone in long-term care, um, you know, this is really for the people that are living at home with loved ones or a spouse or a a child and that they want to keep their loved ones with them as long as possible, but it's getting increasingly harder Mm -hmm. and increasingly more difficult to do. So where is that, which I think, especially in California, we're a little behind, um, you know, and even in the United States, we're behind, you know, in Europe, they have intergenerational communities and they have, you know, social day programs and adult day programs and different opportunities for seniors. But we are behind in the intergenerational aspect of it and providing a day program where you can keep your loved ones at home with you as long as possible, but getting some extra care, getting some things that you need for them and for you before they go to the next level or that they have to do. Because usually, especially here in California too, that's the, you only have you know, a couple of choices here. Right. There's know? not like an intermediate step yeah. between home and long-term. Yeah. Right. And it's either, yeah, and here you have a, a what was a healthy senior that may be going to the, you know, local community center while, the, you know, sudden they're kind of deteriorating and they can't go anymore because they don't have the resources to take care of the, the needs that are coming their way. So what do you do? The next thing, you have to put them in a, a skilled nursing facility, a convalescent hospital, or like you said, a memory care unit. What are, And those can be very expensive. expensive. So what are the options? And what about the people that can't afford yeah. that option? Well, what's nice with this kind of program, the social programs and interacting with the kids... Um, I see it as helping um, prevent the need for them to go into the long-term care. You know, it postpones it, I think, or it can. Yes. Um, because they've got a purpose. They, you know, they've, it's, it's different. I know I get really bored doing the same stuff over and over, and I start losing my mind, and which is kind of a funny, <laughs> funny way to put it. Yeah. Um, so... You know, I just, I knew it would have been beneficial for my mom, you know, probably four or five years ago. And I never have understood why my dad was so resistant. I thought it was money, um, but I now I know that they could have afforded it. And maybe, you know, it would have helped him live a little healthier, a little longer, maybe, but might have been better for, I know it would have been better for her. So it's, um, you know, my goal is to kind of, teach people what it's all about and why it's good. Mm-hmm. It's not just, oh, I don't want to deal with you, so I'm going to put, you know, send you to this social program two or three days a week or five days a week yeah. when, you know, it's really beneficial and, you know, it might even benefit adult children who are caring for their parents um, because if you've got to work or if you've got kids yes. at home, 
you know, like my sister still has school age children and her in-laws live with her. So it's like, you know, it's just, it gets to the point where, you know, there's only so many hours in the day and you can't do everything. Yes. And I think sometimes that when you are in a, in a situation, especially sometimes with a, a spouse that you would feel guilty, like in me and sometimes, um, I think even men can feel more of that. I can do it all. I don't need help from anyone. So, um, you know, so I think sometimes they're, they're less likely to put their, their wives in a program because, you know, they don't want to feel like they let them down. But I think that, um, you know, I think what, if they tried it, they would like it and actually see that this, oh, wow, this is benefiting. This is better because my, I'm not drained by three o'clock yeah. and, and then they, here they are. And I still have to have the whole rest of the evening, but you know, but I, I was able to fill myself up while they're receiving good quality care somewhere else. And then I have more to give when I need to later. So I think, you know, keeping them, if that's your goal in your home longer, you know, works that way too, because you're able to, um, to, to, like I said, have that break. And if you, you know, tried it, you would see that, um, that it is beneficial for both of you and that it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, it's so beneficial for the person with memory issues, even if they're not severe, you know, you can come here and do some fun stuff and interact with other people like you. Um, I know that there is um, early stage Alzheimer's dementia peer to peer support where you know you you're you're recently diagnosed, I'm recently diagnosed, and we can support each other. And I think that's fantastic yes. too, um, because I just think the stigma and the hiding and you know trying to pretend you don't have a problem. You know, it's not doing you any good. So we need to get our society past the, you know, my mind's not so great anymore, but I got to hide it yes. attitude. And I'm hoping that that's changing, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, different generations dealing with it and multiple generations dealing with memory loss. So it's, it's on, you know, it's an ongoing learning process yeah. for all of us. Well, I think with anyone, when you feel like you're all alone and nobody understands, um, that makes you even more isolated. So whenever you come across somebody that is going through something that's similar to you, that right away will connect you to feeling that, oh, wow, it's not only me. Somebody else knows what I'm going through. Somebody gets it. Somebody understands. Yeah. Makes things not so bad sometimes. And I think seeing other people in that situation will help you help the coping of you and just like going to a caregiver support group you know meeting other people that are in your similar situation that have either gone through it longer or you know helping someone that hasn't yet can both be um, something that is really positive in your life because you you know that you're not alone too mm -hmm. and that other people are surviving it not only surviving but you know really making it and there are um, places out there to help there are people out there to help there are, you know, resources that can actually help your life, but you're not alone. And I think just feeling that, that other people are, know what you're going through can be healing mm -hmm. uh, for the caregiver and the participant as well. I know. I just recently, what was it November, October, November. So about four months ago was when I first started going to the support group and the very first meeting I felt like I had been helped. It was like, oh my gosh, this is the right place to be. I actually met the daughter of one of my mom's neighbors and we've connected. So that's fantastic because, you know, we can help each other out because um, her mom had a stroke and has um, memory issues due to that. And there's a lot of times when her mom, you know, gets fired up and decides it's time to go and she packs up her stuff and is headed out the door. And <laughs> that's not the way it works. Um, and if I'm there, I can, you know, and I see it, I can kind of talk her out of it or distract her long enough or text her daughter and say, yeah, you might want to come over here and diffuse mom or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that was really great. The very, the next meeting, the second meeting, there was people there. Um, one gal, her husband's very young and was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and it, 
the kind of work he did, um, you know, just even early memory issues prevented him from being able to work. So he went from being a very functioning, you know, older, not older, but I don't know, middle-aged adult. He can't do what he used to do, and she didn't know what to do, and I had ideas for her. And then there was another gal who's, she's got more than she can handle, and I had couple of solutions for her so it was like wow I got stuff out of this that I needed and now I'm giving back and that was just the first two meetings so definitely be having a purpose and feeling like what you're doing matters is very important yes it is yes it is so I wanted also mm -hmm. to let you know that um out of the American Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and Other Dementias that the uh, just going back to Um, intergenerational communities. Um, I just wanted to read you this. It says, older adults who spend extended time with children burned more calories, experienced fewer falls, were less reliant on canes, and demonstrated improved memory. Older adults with cognitive impairments experienced more positive effect during interactions with children. So that was just some back to the the research that you were asking earlier, but it also validates that preschool children involved in intergenerational programs, like I said before, have higher personal and social development scores than those in child care only programs. So back to the mutually beneficial and children who regularly participate in a shared site have enhanced perceptions of older adults. And um, yeah, and for older adults on a regular interaction with children result in an atmosphere that is more family home-like and promote social enrichment and renewed interest in others. So that's amazing. Yeah. So we need to do we need more to of integ- this. Yeah, we need to integrate you know and daycares and preschools and how this and, and how this came about, um, this has been uh, not only a long term um, dream of our executive director Janine Stevens, but back when I was in college and this is a couple years. Yeah. <laughs> some years ago. Um, but you know, gosh, really how long, (laughs) let me, let me count, um, go, oh gosh, let's not count. Okay. So back in college, a couple decades ago, um, I did my, uh, you know, senior research, um, paper on intergenerational programs and coming from my background of, you know, working at my, my major was a human development and, um, an emphasis on gerontology and the lifespan. So, and then how I started, I started working with children and I was a behavioral therapist for children with special needs. And that's how I got introduced to this, this center, celebration center. And, um, and then how this came about is, you know, I learned that this was the executive director's um, long-term dream of hers that she's had for, you know, over, 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 over 30 years. And, um, we got together and I told her my background and it was just like, wow, you know, everything was aligned and our heart for this has been placed for a long time and God willing, we will be able to see it really come to fruition and to really benefit the community around us. Um, but it is something that has been on the hearts of, you know, several people here that have seen the benefit for a long time. And, but it's odd to us that so many people don't know about it and haven't heard of something like this. And really, how does that kind of work? And children and old, you know, elderly, that's just strange. And it's not at all. And it shouldn't be at all. And that's what we, you know, are all about is really not only providing the best quality care for your children, but the best quality care for the families all involved and for the now seniors. So getting the word out that we are here and ready to serve is just, you know, so important to us because not many people know. And now we've received our license and we're like, where are all these seniors that we're ready to help? And we are ready for you here to serve and, and getting that word out that there is another choice, there is another option, is, um, you know, just really what we are hoping to do and that we're able to actually see people reap the benefits of, um, you know, this social day model with the intergenerational 
facility. It's just uh, well, that's a my goal is dream. to help help people learn and understand what options are there because mm-hmm. um, I'm we're fairly certain that my mom actually started showing signs of memory issues in 1995. Sure. Um, she was probably 53, which is kind of scary because I'm 51. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and even if she wasn't showing signs then, um, I know she was showing, ugh, showing signs in the late 90s, early 2000s. We had a business together, and she would take orders from people and not write down any directions. So it would just be this random, what am I supposed to do with this? And one day I asked her... Um, what, what am I supposed to do with, you know, Mrs. Smith's order? And she looked at it and she goes, well, that's so-and-so's handwriting. And I'm like, no, that's your handwriting. And that was really scary. Mm-hmm. And then I had a client call up and she was just super frustrated because everything she was telling my mother literally was going in one ear and out the other. And she was getting really frustrated. And, you know, when my parents retired in 2005, I was concerned because I knew, you know, not having the... Um, interaction with clients and employees and meaningful work was not beneficial to my mom, but having to follow her around and check up on her all the time was not beneficial to me. So, um, you know, and now it's here 2018. But she's still here. You know, mm-hmm. she doesn't have short term memory. I don't think she has much long term memory or it comes and goes. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been a long time, you know, it, it, 18 years easily. And yeah. possibly more. So, you know, you can't, you know, we, thankfully my father put aside enough money that we should be able to keep her in the community she lives in now for 20 years, which since her mother lived to 91 with Alzheimer's, that's, you know, yeah. what we have to look at. And, um, you know, and it's just these kind of programs where, you know, maybe she would have been better now if she had participated in a similar program yeah. that I had found for her that, you know, never happened for her. Yeah, and they do say that the moment early on, the moment that you suspect that someone you love is going through this is to start getting things in order at that time, Um, you know, even with estate planning Mm -hmm. um, as well. But it's very, very important to get the ball rolling as soon as possible. And I know some people, of course, there's um, denial it's a lot of that. You don't want to believe it. And you don't know much about it. And that's what I've talked about, you know, education and educating our society. Because more and more we're hearing of um, people, you know, going through this and more families. And, and avoiding doesn't help. No, it doesn't. Yeah. and <laughs> I can tell you that from personal yeah. experience. <laughs> so if you can educate yourself... And the best way possible for not only you, but for your loved one of what they're going through, the most help that you can reach out and get early on, the better you are. And, and, and you're, you know, blessed in the fact that financially you're able to mm-hmm. care for and your father put away some money that is, you know, that is going to be able to take care of your mother. That's something that is just, um, you know, so to speak, priceless. It definitely. Uh, <laughs> um, because not, not everybody's in that situation. Well, and, you know, I think my grandmother had Alzheimer's for about 15 years. So my mom's already surpassed that. So it's hard to plan ahead, you know, because we, we don't have, you know, like they say, when you've met one person with dementia, you've met one person with dementia because everybody's different. Right. Everybody's path with it is different. Yes. So it's hard to know to plan ahead. And I think, I think my dad was in denial. I know she was. Yeah. Um, so it's, I'm glad that the financial part is there. It's just, sometimes it's sad to look back on and say, well, you know, back in, you know, 2013, I think it was when I realized, you know, my dad's health wasn't great and I knew dealing with her was stressful and I thought it'd be beneficial to the two of them for her to go to a social day program. And he just refused. And it, and now that I see how good she is where she's at, interacting with people like her, and when somebody brings you know younger family members to visit with grandma or great grandma, she loves to deal with the little kids. Mm-hmm. So you know it's 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 so obvious how good it is. That's my goal. I want I want people to understand it's not 
You're not abdicating your responsibility to your loved one. You're actually doing them a favor. You're benefiting their mind and their body and an all all together important. And yes. it's definitely, it's a, it's a much better idea than, you know, just staying at home. And because my sister and I believe that they've been in their house just under 47 years. And so I think a lot of her daily activities fell into the um, long-term memory. And she just had repetitious patterns that she did that resembled what she did when we were kids growing up. And, you know, when that whole system got upended with my father on in the hospital and then on hospice and caregivers in the home and then he passed away, mm-hmm. you know, then it became glaringly obvious that she was worse off than we expected. And, you know, then we have to figure out what to do. And there was no planning literally no planning for what to do if he went first, Mm -hmm. which was definitely likely with his health issues. So, you know. What would have made a difference, do you think, for him to see? I think if he had just gone with her, like I brought her here for the the senior luncheon that you had, Mm -hmm. and she had a great time. And a lot of what you guys do here, they do in her community, and she's not interested in doing those things with me there, but she was interested in doing them with them here. And I don't know if if it, my demeanor was different. I'm not sure if just getting her out of her normal routine made it different. Mm-hmm. But I think if he had gone and spent time with her at, you know, the, the adult day program that was closest to their home, I think he might have, and if he had gone with an open mind, I mm-hmm. think he might have seen how beneficial it was because I was skeptical because they said, oh, similar things. You know, we do current events and I'm thinking, really? (laughs) Not sure she has too much clue Um, and, you know, calisthenics and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it just it it didn't sound like it fit with her really well, but I knew that it was important enough that we should at least try it. You know, if it's not going to be good for her, then you don't go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I pushed, but he just refused. Mm-hmm. So I think definitely inviting, you know, the caregivers, yeah, the seniors and their family or their yeah. caregivers or wherever, you know, in and letting them know, you know, you know, there was all kinds of different activities. We played cornhole yeah, and she won yeah. <laughs> and she didn't really understand what she was doing, but she had a good time when we right. even got her to dance. So, yes. You know, I, I felt so good about this program and the, you know, the hours my mom and I spent here with you guys. When we left, I was like, man, I wonder if I should, like, bring her here occasionally. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> Feel free. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know. Please do, yes. Yeah. Well, we've even looked into that when and um, approached the communities in Brentwood, too, that um, are, you know, assisted living that, you know, feel free, more than um, beneficial for people to come and get out and go somewhere else. They, these particular um, places do have their own activities. But just like you said, sometimes people need to get out of where mm-hmm. they are into a different environment, into seeing different um, people and places. And like I said, they don't have kids there. Yeah. Um, so that's another option. But, um, yeah, so that's always a, you know, you know, an option for people to come from, you know, assisted living and places like that. And even I've gone to the in-home, um, some of the residential in-home that don't necessarily have, you know, very many, this is small. Yeah, like the boarding care. Yeah, boarding, thank you. The boarding care, that's what I was thinking about. The boarding care that don't, you know, they provide you know, some activities, but not really. And, you know, I visited a couple and not much was going on. Yeah. A lot of TV watching. Yeah. So, and we all know how that goes with the TV and it doesn't do anything to stimulate your body or burn your calories or get your muscles moving. So it doesn't stimulate your brain. either. Yeah. Or your brain. Not much. Yeah. So to get people in out of there to come here, you know, that's what we're trying to you know, advocate for them as well to to come out and um, you know to come here and uh, give that a try as well. But I think that you know you are onto something too. That if maybe your father, you know, it's often hard to look back at if and what if we did this and you know it, that's too late. But 
going forward to maybe somebody that is listening or someone that you run into to say, give it a try. And, you know, to bring your loved one, if you are a caregiver, come with them, come see what it's about. And you think you know what it is and you see the activities on there. Oh, they're not into that. Well, what they were once into may not be what they're into anymore. And, um, you know, people that do these kind of programs and design the activities really do base it on their clientele of what they want to do. Nobody's going to make somebody sit and do something that they're miserable at. And, it, you know, it's going to be the people that are coming here, what they are into. But I think you do find that things change. Someone that once didn't garden before, all of a sudden, yeah, let's go plant some flowers. Or, you know... I, I mean, I know that as I grow older, I change in the things that I like to do, too. And what I didn't think I liked arts and crafts. And now, okay, <laughs> we're painting rocks. <laughs> and so you never know. And, and trying it, what some person will do at home, kind of like it's similar to preschool. The parents, you know, we get this all the time. Oh, they won't do that. They won't eat that. They won't. They don't like that. Well, here they do, you know, yeah. and that's very similar to what we find with the senior participants. And, you know, if you see other of your peers doing it, you tend to, okay, maybe that's not so bad. And what did we have at our, our Heart for Seniors luncheon? We had Wee Bowling. Yes. So, and, you know, and just seeing the number of people that came from our community, you know, the, from the senior center, from the senior apartment complexes, from, you know, memory care and um, just other places churches and coming here and watching them do wee bowling, watching them do arts with the, the, um, decorative rock, um, and paintings and all of that. And, you know, the number of people that really enjoyed bingo, I thought, Oh gosh, I don't know if this is gonna, no, they love bingo. You know, it's, it was great. So seeing this and then getting up and dancing, Oh yeah. Line dancing. You know, and that was their idea. Yeah, I, try, I asked my mom, because you guys were giving more raffle tickets if you got up and danced. That's right. And she's raffle like... Raffle tickets are motivating. Well, she, I said, oh, hey, you want to dance with me? And she's like, no. But, you know, I just started doing the line dancing, and she followed along, and I I think she had a really good time. That's you know, right. You know, so it was... And it was, you know, it was a very nice way to spend time with her outside of where she lives now, mm-hmm. and... You know, because sometimes that can get frustrating, and I'm dealing with other residents there sometimes. And you know, I I do nail, I do manicures, paint yeah. nails, and you know, take. Oh, good. We'd like to have you in here too <laughs> to have a. We want to have salon days as well. That's it's funny because other uh, family members have asked what I charge. I'm like, I don't do this professionally, <laughs> and the and the caregivers, and I just learned this a couple weeks ago. They kind of turn a blind eye. They're not allowed to clip the nails. Uh-huh. Um, because if you accidentally clip skin, you could sure. end up with infections and all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, now no pressure to make sure right. I don't do that. Um, and I hope I don't. I did I did knit my mom once, so that's not too horrible. But because I do other people, you know, I, I guess technically I'm not supposed to. But, you know, there was one day I, I finally convinced one of my mom's other neighbors Um, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, why don't you let me, oh, we're doing nails. You know, why don't you join in? And holy Toledo, that woman needed her nails trimmed so badly. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I, if that was all I could do was trim her nails. Yeah. Um, that was, that was a blessing for, you know, I guess they bring somebody in, but I don't know. They probably resist. Oh, I don't need you to do my nails. So I just made it fun, and, you know, I could probably spend a whole day there doing sure. it. <laughs> well, what a caring thing to do for somebody, though, because, you know, even the touch mm-hmm. that they're receiving from someone doing their, you know, their nails or painting or just putting care into their appearance, mm-hmm. that that is a game changer, too, I think, for them. Gosh, you're making me think of a memory, too. I remember <laughs> I used to do that, too, when I was... I mean, I was young, little, and not only did I do it for my great aunt, I used to give her pedicures and boy, did she have some bad toenails, but I did it and I would do it, but I I loved it too. I loved it as much as she loved it and needed it. I did, you remember painting her nails and then I would go in to the, um, convalescent hospitals and I would paint their nails and 
you know, they don't get a lot of touch, you mm-hmm. know, and how long can someone go without just experiencing, uh, you know, just some physical contact too, you know, is really, really good for your soul, mm-hmm. good for your, um, your body too, but emotionally, um, what a difference that makes. And I contacted my friend after I ran into, um, uh, one of my old favorite, favorite, favorite teachers of all time. I ran into her uh, at a um, rehabilitation center and she had, uh, well, this was a, a rehab and uh, convalescent hospital, but she had Alzheimer's, it, you know, clearly. And I looked at her and she, her face looked so young and her hair was white and it wasn't white when I had seen her the last time. So I called my friend and I said, she was still this amazing woman. You could tell she was still the same, even though she couldn't remember, you know, most likely she didn't remember me, even though she kind of led on that she did, but I don't know. I don't think she did, but you could tell that she, that bright spirit was still there. And I contacted my friend that I went to school with growing up and I said, will you promise me if I don't remember and you, and you're around and and you are all there? I said, could you make sure you dye my hair? Because, you know, people look differently at you, you know, just these people thought she was a lot older than she was. Mm. Um, and I think that we forget sometimes that whoever they once were, um, meant something to them, you Mm -hmm. know? And, you know, I just said, you know, you make sure you dye my hair because I don't want, I don't want, I don't want people to look at me like that, you know, that I'm older than I am and I'm not this vibrant person that I once was. And I think putting that into somebody, you know, would you like me to do your hair? Would you, did, you know, maybe they don't, maybe they don't care anymore, but maybe they do, you know? Well, you were and, talking about um, touch. I bet you the little kids are more free with hugs. Sure. Um, Cause I know when I, when I go to leave with my mom, I always give her a big hug But half the time I'm hugging all of her friends. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I bring goodies for them to eat, which they get plenty of dessert, but you'd think they don't get any. Um, Cause if I bring, you know, leftover cookies and brownies from like our rotary club mm-hmm. meeting, um, you'd think I was bringing a sack of gold or the keys to the door sure. to let them out. Yeah. <laughs> and they always give hugs and stuff. So, mm-hmm. You know, and I give them back because I know how important it is. But it, it took a little while. To, it's like, I don't even know you. And, you know, I have, mm-hmm. I don't know much about you because you can't tell me. And yeah. so, but now it's just like, you know, it's routine now. So it just, seems that us as adults get so guarded. Yeah. Sometimes. And, and as you were saying, the children are just more free with hugs. Hugs free, you know, yeah. for free. And um, because I think they get how important it is and how good it actually feels to receive that from another person and how important it is. And sometimes as well, we I grow think older, too, seniors are, it. they're not as busy, you know, mom and dad are busy and there's work and chores and kid activities and 500 things to do. So it's, you know, I think maybe interacting with the, the little kids, interacting with the seniors, they've got a little bit more time, a little bit more patience to listen to maybe silly kid stories or just whatever that maybe mom and dad don't have as much time as they'd like to do. So, yes. you know, there's a lot of benefits all the way around yes. to this kind of program. Yeah. So I will, I will definitely be an advocate for this mm-hmm. now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm in a bicycle club and it's frustrating because there's, I ride with a gentleman that's 31 years older than me and he kicks my butt. <laughs> he's faster on the hills. That's he's great. faster on the flats. It's like, seriously, can't, can't I have an age advantage? <laughs> and I do. I, I have friends that ha, are, have lost their spouses and I, and I tell them, you know, you may have to consider moving into an assisted living community someday because, you know, it's just, we're all living longer. And, you know, I personally think, you know, if you, you move into a place where they're taking care of, you know, home maintenance and the cooking and you can do whatever the heck you want. That sounds like the perfect retirement yes. to me. Yes. So, you know, and obviously that's an expensive option, but you know, this is a good option for even, even if you don't have memory issues. Yes. Oh so. yeah. Yeah. And this is very, very beneficial. It's not only for people that do have memory issues and just like you were saying, the isolation, um, of someone and that can make somebody deteriorate 
quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so to just get out and it's very beneficial um, socially, but even people that just can't get around as much, it doesn't help them to just sit at home by Mm-mm. themselves. It does not do anything for them. When you start talking to the dog and when the dog starts answering back, mm-hmm. you know, you have a problem. <laughs> and just sometimes getting out, you don't even realize how much exercise you're getting by just, you know, coming here and you don't, you know, you provide movement in ways that people don't think they're exercising. Sometimes people don't want to know they're exercising right. or they don't want to put that, no, I don't want to exercise, but, you know, playing a game or doing what we did the other day when, when you all were here, the, um, the, uh, cornhole, you know, you're, you're getting steps in, you're getting your movements, you're, you know, doing the balloon toss with children. Let me help. Oh, a child wants to play with me. Okay. I'll, you know, I'll do it for them, but it's benefiting the participant who's, you know, getting exercise as well that they wouldn't normally be getting at home. That's true. Well, the cornhole was really good because you have to think about it and you have to aim and you have to toss and adjust how hard or light you toss and, You know, I'm not sure that all of that contemplation went through my mom's mind, Mm -hmm. but I think maybe just muscle memory from years ago. Um, And maybe she did consider it's hard to know, but I just playing with her, I was like, man, this is really a good thing to do for your brain. Yes. Um, And it was fun. And Mm -hmm. that's, that's the kind of things that I'm trying to, to, to educate people on. It's like, there are, there are so many more options than you know, quote unquote, dumping them in a facility or leaving them at home and being at home 24 seven with them until you want to either strangle yourself or strangle them or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. just, you know, there's so many options and I'm going to teach the world that there's all these great options. That's amazing. I hope you do. Well, and we, even for our kids in preschool, we often, um, one of our, our big mottos is, uh, learning through play. And so the kids may not even know that they're what they're learning at the time that this is a math skill because they're having fun. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole point of teaching is to educate them through fun. And that's what we do here so that, um, you know, we're not sitting down doing dittos <laughs> at the table and you must complete this many numbers. No, they're doing activities and games and Um, you know, not just doing rote learning, but actually doing it through, um, experiential play. And, um, and that is just a big benefit. So it's kind of the same over with the senior participants that we are stimulating our brains and our memory in ways that we're not calling it that exactly. You know, we're not sitting down doing, you know, um, whatever, you know, different, um, activities where, but we're doing, we're stimulating them mm-hmm. through fun or things that they enjoy or, you know, different activities. So they're, they're getting exercise through enjoyable activities that they want to do so that it doesn't, it's not a drool, you know, a grueling task, right. but it's, you know, something that, Oh, that was, you know, that was fun and a good positive experience that is helping them, their brains, their bodies, and their social emotional um, parts of self. So it gives me ideas of things to do with my mom, and I think I'm going to get a cornhole for their um, residence because yeah. it was fun, and I want to have one at home. So thinking about building maybe you know three because they only need the one, mm-hmm. and um, there's a gentleman there who's very able-bodied and I know he really enjoys to play catch so you know even if he just tossed the beanbag on his own Mm -hmm. I think he would you know would benefit him because I've seen in the in the last almost year I can see that he's deteriorating a little bit mentally and it's hard to see even on somebody that I don't know very well yeah um so but it's you know I'm going to suggest to the activity coordinator over there that they try to get you know, the more able-bodied ones to dance. And if they yeah. just if they just get a half a dozen of them up and moving, <clears throat> maybe the other ones will. And even the ones with walkers can do something, I'm sure. That would be I more... motivation and incentive 
is key here too. <laughs> How many people do you think out here would have done it if we didn't throw in prizes or That's true. raffle? You know, but we said all of a sudden you mentioned five raffle tickets if you get up and dance, and, and who the whole place was dancing. That's true. You know, so I think that you know, and that's just like you know, I I keep going back to this, the benefits of or the similarities sometimes of um, children and um, as we age, sometimes we just don't change. It's still motivation and incentive. So, you know, to get kids to do things too, sometimes you got to provide motivation and incentive and we're the same as we grow old. Well, I'm, I'm laughing because mm. I have three golden retrievers and the middle one is three and a half and she is very, she basically is obedient for treats. Mm-hmm. And if I pull into the garage and she stays in the garage and I walk in the kitchen and I don't immediately go into the pantry to get her treats. She looks at me like, yo, human treats. I was obedient. Where's my treat? Yeah. And I'm, and I'm thinking, and they've, they've, they use like the little mini candy bars when they play bingo and stuff. That's the prizes. So maybe I'll go buy a couple of big bags of that and say, let's encourage them to yeah. do some goofy dancing. Cause some of the caregivers probably could use a little, you know, yeah. moving around too. And, mm-hmm. you know, just sometimes it just, there just needs to be a little bit more life over there. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, and you know, learn, you know, and if you, in an, I guess in a night, I don't know if it's ideal, but if you have your loved one at home and then you're bringing them to a um, program like yours and then eventually, you know, they do need more 24 hour care. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you've learned things that you can do with them. Whereas I'm having to learn it while my mom's there. And it's yeah. like, you know, I go and I visit and there's times when she's like, so what have you been up to? And, you know, three minutes later, so what have you been up to? And yeah. I sometimes just give her different versions of what I've been up yeah. to because after a while, you know, I can only answer that question so yeah. many times. And, yeah. You know, and I try to encourage her to do things, and I get, eh, you know, I don't want to do mm-hmm. that. And it's like, oh. So it's it's been a struggle for me to find things to do with her. And, you know, I can see how if, you know, we'd come and done more stuff here when she had more of her memory, you know, then I would know that a ways of motivating her there. So you're, you're teaching me how to motivate yeah. some of the ladies over there a lot more. So yeah. that's, see, it's beneficial even though yes. she's kind of beyond being here yeah and even you know that just goes back to sharing and talking and getting you know that's what we were I believe you know meant to do how can we help each other if we don't share with each other our Mm -hmm. experience and learn from each other and um and all of that we really just going I was thinking while you were talking about the cornhole you know we have big dreams for this place too like I was saying and Boy, we'd like a, you know, a senior playground. And um, have you heard of these? No. There are. These are actually things um, that are different activities that you can get outdoors Hmm. for seniors to do. And it's called a senior playground. And we'd love to have a bocce ball, you know. That's so wonderful for exercise and fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just another thing to get out and do and to just provide enjoyment and pleasure in activities that provide good, healthy benefits from them. So, you know, getting, getting out and seeing what, you know, they will enjoy and getting them to try different things that they may not have ever been into. You never know. That's true. And sometimes, unfortunately, somebody else can get your parent or your loved one to do something that you can't, you know, just like kids back to that again, just like kids teacher. Wow. You got them to do that. They'll <laughs> never do that at home. See, same here. Your mom may not do so. Oh, you know, nah, I don't want to do that. Somebody else comes and asks. Okay. <laughs> and you're thinking, what? Wait, yeah, wait a minute. What? It's just the way we are. I don't know. We're stubborn sometimes. That is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, is there any one last thing you want people to know before we wrap up? I don't want to take your whole day. <laughs> Oh, just that I think to really try to bridge the gap between the generations, start looking at that, that we really benefit from being in community together. We really benefit, and and I'm talking about all in between, not just young and old, but everywhere in between. And um, looking back to my early days and back when I was in college, you know, seeing how 
you would have even a teen that would come, uh, you know, having a, a um, retired gentleman come alongside a, a troubled teen. And the difference that this gentleman made in his life, um, it's just a different kind of a thing. And it's just something that our society is missing. And to get these generations together, I think you're going to see incredible things in our community, not only here, but as you see that it's expanding all over the place. And Mm -hmm. there's a couple of, um, there's a really great intergenerational facility in San Diego and one in Van Nuys. And... um, that they've seen incredible things, but I, I, you've probably heard of the one in Seattle, even that is in a nursing home, Mm-mm. a preschool that is inside a nursing home. I think I've seen stories. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's there, but I've seen stories of uh, maybe it is the preschool in the nursing home. Yeah, and so we really like to see that happen in you know in the Brentwood community, Antioch, Oakley area. Um, we'd really like to see that come together and to just educate yourself. If you have a love, uh, an aging loved one, to what kind of opportunities they are to get the support, the resources, and um, for caregivers to know that they are not alone and um, that there is support out there and that there are people that are willing to help and believe that that is their passion to help. And so to utilize those resources is just keep and to spread the word, spread Definitely. the word that we are here and um that there is help. Well, I, I, the phrase, it takes a village, keeps running through my yeah. head. You know, and, and I, I'm i kind of seeing, you know, like if the seniors are helping the, the little kids and even the school-age kids, and that helps the parents, so the, you know, the middle generation, I don't know if that's the right word, mm-hmm. but I can, just, I can just see, like, if we made this all happen, you know, there, I think we'd have a lot less issues in our society from violence, yes. you know, all kinds. Of, I just see. I can see all kinds of benefits. So it gives me chills. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with the the seniors that need a little stimulation and and you know help during the day and and work our way out towards fixing our world. Sounds great to me. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate you being here. Throughout my interview with Jennifer, the phrase "It takes a village" kept going through my head over and over. I find it fascinating that research is proving that multi-generations taking care of each other and helping each other is so dramatically beneficial for all involved. So I hope you can take advantage of a senior social program in your area and hopefully there is one that incorporates children because I feel that the addition of kids helping the seniors and the seniors helping the children just makes that socialization so much stronger beneficially for everyone involved. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today or in previous episodes as well, please go to wherever you download your podcasts from and rate and review us. This allows others to find us and allows us to share the wisdom and support we've garnered over the years. Thanks again. See you next week. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. 